Getting a job in Germany as a military spouse is quite the challenge, but here's some ideas. Can you keep your current job in telework without paying US and German taxes under the Status of Forces Agreement or your visa for living over here in Germany? If your current employer won't let you telework, I've got a link in the description that'll go over a bunch of other telework opportunities for you. If you are quitting your job in the US, it may be possible for you to claim unemployment while living in Germany. Talk to the unemployment office from the state that you are leaving from to learn more information. Okay, you've probably heard of US jobs.gov. I would go to that website, type in the area that you're going to be PCSing to, and start looking at jobs that interest you. I would also create a profile that has all of the informa necessary information that you need to get any job on that website and keep it updated. You can always pivot if you want to later, but there's a ton of different options of jobs on there, anywhere from a store clerk at the commissary to a substitute teacher on base to an IT specialist making over $80,000 a year. The AFES Exchange so the PX or the BX, the Shopette, or any other AFES facility. Uh, people are always coming in and out of Germany every single month, so they're always looking for new employees. So maybe you don't want to work when you get overseas. Most people are here only three to five years, depending on what your job is. Uh, so maybe you take this time to go back to school, earn that degree that you need, or earn that uh, certificate that you're gonna need uh, to start your next career when you get back to the States. Volunteer, this is something that I recommend that everyone does, at least considers, um, especially when they first get to their new overseas location. There's a bunch of different opportunities on base for you to volunteer. I would start with the subclubs, such as AFES, VWF, the USO, MWR, the Red Cross, Military Auto Source. Oh, that reminds me actually, there's a lot of car dealerships all around the base um, overseas. And they're always looking for employment, uh, especially if you can speak English. Volunteer at the Spouses Club. I'm a member of the Spouses Club and I have learned that once you get involved with the Spouses Club, uh, you're gonna find new friends, you're gonna find like-minded people. Um, it may get your foot in the door to jobs that you didn't even know existed um, or other opportunities. So I would, I would definitely say get involved with the Spouses Club, see what they're doing, um, give back to the community, and you might find an opportunity there as well. Start your own business. There's actually a couple different ways that you can do this. The first one is through a home-based business or an HBB where you need to fill out paperwork to get the permission to be able to sell your products and services uh, to the people there on the base, such as food or photography or what have you. If you do go down the HBB route, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. The first thing is taxes. This has kind of been a uh, hot topic over the years. Uh, so you'll want to talk to Family and MWR or ACS, whoever is putting together the HBB program at your base. Talk to them about that before you get involved just to make sure you're covering all bases. And the second thing is you can't use your Status of Forces Agreement benefits uh, to help your, your, your business, such as the tax-free gas or uh, using the post office to ship goods or to receive goods. So just some things to keep in mind that you will go through if you do go through the process of becoming an HBB. The other way to start your own business is to do it completely from scratch. This is what I did. This is going to take longer. Uh, this is going to be a lot more difficult, but it is possible uh, for you to do while living here. I basically took three things that I was passionate about, which was travel, videography, uh, and helping the military community. Combine those three things into what you see today, which is DTV. Uh, so there's a lot of legwork that you have to put in uh, before you get this business started or whatever business that you're going to do to get it started. Uh, also, I do pay taxes uh, on the German side and the American side. So that's something you want to think about before you get into your own business. Figure out the tax situation. Uh, are you going to have to pay German taxes? Do you just pay American taxes? Uh, and make sure that you talk to all the resources that you have about that before you get knees deep into creating your own business. Okay, I also recently just found some spouse employment, career and education opportunities through Army MWR. There's a bunch of them, so I'm just gonna leave the link in the description below. But for example, there's some pretty good hiring opportunities with hiring our heroes, such as the Fellows Program. Again, I will leave all the links in the description so you can check out all the different opportunities there. Get hired to work on the local economy. In Germany, you can get what's called a mini job, which pays out maximum 520 euros Euro a month or no more than 6,240 euro per year. There's great benefits to having a mini job while living overseas. Usually it's flexible, it's part-time, uh, you're tax exempt. I actually had a mini job when I lived over here and one of the only reasons why I took it, uh, it was kind of during COVID time. So I just wanted some extra cash. I've always wanted to work in a bar. 
uh, overseas, I don't know why, uh, but I wanted to learn the language a little bit better, talk with people, I'm a very social person. Uh, so anyways, I ended up connecting with this restaurant downtown and they hired me to basically deliver burgers uh, <laughs> and to be the bartender. And so I did that on and off during COVID uh, and it was a great opportunity. I made a little extra cash and I was able to uh, practice my German. Okay, my last two recommendations that I have for you. The first one is learn a new language like it's your job. There are so many different ways these days to learn a new language, but if you're coming over, let's say for, to Germany, for example, because that's where I'm at, uh, I did three main things to learn a new language. The first one was change all my subtitles when I was watching any movie, any show, any series on TV. Uh, the second thing was I put post-it notes all over my house. My wife was thrilled about that. And the third thing was I, I started, I did a bunch of classes and the best class that I took was Survival German with Nanya. I'll leave all those links into the, in, a, in the description here below. And I also have a video that goes over all three of those different steps that I just talked about. Uh, and the second thing I would say is if you are a local national, um, but maybe you're married to an American that lives on the base, check out the host nation jobs. There's a lot of different jobs for the host nation um, folks that that are actually from that area, uh, wherever you are overseas. I will leave a link in the description that has a list of those jobs and how you apply and, and what have you. Um, but those are my biggest recommendations for you moving overseas. Now, there are other opportunities out there that I probably have missed, but this is a really good start, especially when you're um, before you even get over to the overseas location or right when you land uh, to start getting yourself active and getting yourself uh, involved in the community uh, and in the workforce. So good luck with that. If you're looking for more content about PCS prep, travel, or local life as an American living here in Germany, subscribe to the channel and I will catch you in the next one.